Hello, my name is Bernice Dauda. I'm the co-host of this podcast as well as with the Holy Spirit, who is my fellow co-host upon this podcast. And it's so nice to see you today. If you're here for the first time, welcome. Feel free to look around to the other episodes. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment on those videos. And I'm also not talking to only the new people. I'm also talking to you if you're older returning. So nice to see you once again. And um, so let's dive into today's today's story. The story of David, right? How he got to know Saul and how he became a servant of Saul and became very close to Jonathan was that it started with him defeating the giant Goliath. And the reward for defeating the giant Goliath was that you you would get the daughter of Saul to marry and also that your family would be exempted from taxes. So obviously, if he marries the daughter of Saul, it means he is the son-in-law of Saul. So that was also a very close connection and relationship that Saul had with David. God had promised that David was going to be the king, but I do not believe that Saul knew of that promise until maybe way later, even though he was anointed by Samuel. And um, Saul, in the course of David being a part of his ranks as well, because he also became a soldier, it started that some people would sing that Saul slew... um, Saul slew... 1,000 and David slew 10,000 because David was really, really good at war. He was articulated with fighting, winning, and all of that. So in order, in the way people started praising David was that David was doing way more than Saul. And that was the beginning of years of failed assassination attempts to David to a point that he had to leave. And then, but then afterwards, there was a time that Saul went into a battle with Jonathan and Saul was killed, or rather he fell up on, on top of his sword and Jonathan was killed. So now a messenger comes to David and you would think that after all this time of Saul trying to kill David, that you would see David saying, eh, it's, it's good for him, you know, right, it serves him right, you know, he did not do that whether he got so um i would say angry and sad that the king the anointed king of israel would die at the sword of another uh, the sword of someone that is not israel so a gentile at that time and the messenger that came to david actually made it seem like he killed saul so he actually david then was enraged and took the person and killed the person and then he also then found the body of Saul and Jonathan and gave them a burial. And also the way he would speak about Saul, even at that moment, was very respectful. He never disrespected, even when he had the chance to even kill Saul, he did not kill Saul um, at a cave that, I forgot the name of the cave, if there was a name. But there was a cave that um, Saul entered into and David was in the cave he had the opportunity to kill Saul, but he did not. So you can tell that in the journey of Saul and David, Saul was like a thorn in the flesh of David till the day he died. But at the same time, David had a posture of honor to Saul, regardless of everything. And after this very, very long story, a breakdown of the Bible story, I want to say that the topic for today is the the honor of mentorship. And we are now in a time and space where mentorship it is, is really, really appreciated now. And a lot of people are taking on mentors, taking on people that will disciple them and all of that. Um, but sometimes when that human being reveals themselves as a human being an unperfect flawed human being then the next thing we see is oh so so person did this to me i can't da, 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 da. and you come out to the public to publicly dishonor 
and shame and criticize the person that taught you no matter how long the person taught you for the person did have a hand in your life of course the person whatever the person did i'm not excusing what they did i'm trying to say that as a mentee we need to also have that habit or rather that mindset and culture of honoring even when those that we are honoring fall short this happens in even in parenthood this happens um with workplace or rather um career mentorship it can happen with academic work um, mentorship it can happen anywhere because we are human beings that are flawed of course some can stretch your patience like for instance assassination is quite huge and it does paint like it is a good reason to come out and dishonor and criticize and shame and maybe ridicule whoever the person is but as christians as disciples of christ we are to take the examples of how of christ we have to take the examples of how God wants us to treat those that are in authority that are mentoring us in one way or another. And this also points to the body of Christ and how sometimes we treat the fathers of old. Because now you are more exposed to more books and maybe more knowledge, you can tend to pick out the flaws in their teaching, but it still does not downplay their impact on people's lives. And it definitely does not give you the go-ahead to dishonor and ridicule and publicly shame these people. They have paid their dues. They have sought the face of god and they are in relationship and in friendship with it with 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 christ that should count for even a little bit if you cannot mutter the full honor a little bit of honor just a little bit (laughs) so that is what i'm trying to say with today and also that um it also shows that we are to have a level of commitment to the people that we say we want us them to mentor us um sometimes it can be painted as like oh mentorship or discipleship is a is a uncommitted relationship where you can breeze in and out with any and every mentor maybe you have like 10 mentors in 10 years um you might be gaining something, but you might not get the, get the fullness of that mentor by breathing in and out. Sometimes it could take years with one person, observing the person, sitting under their teaching, maybe two, three, four, five years. And in this situation, I would say the best person to tell you how long to stay is God. You also have to have a commitment to the people that are mentoring you, to the people that are discipling you, even when they fall short. Even when they fall short, be committed to the process. Be committed to them. It's not easy as well being obedient to someone that tries their best to to just press your buttons. The Bible says to the father, do not exasperate your children. But the Bible still says, honor your father and mother. It gives the advice to the fathers to not anger them. And then it gives you the command to honor them. Actually, I would even call the do not exasperate your child a command. So both of you are giving commands. It is better that when you stand before God, you you have kept, kept your part. Even though your father does not ha, has not kept his part. Even though your mother has not kept their part, even though your spiritual parent or father, whoever your pastor has not kept his part, because when he stands before Christ, it's not you that is now going to come and advocate for him or de advocate for him. That word is so wrong. <laughs> or accuse him of anything he has done. He will stand before God and present his own issues. And you will stand before God and have your issues presented. So it is better you hold on to your commands and you do what you can. But in that situation, it's also not easy. And I would say like 
the best thing to do when you're in a very, very, you're in a relationship, a mentorship relationship or a discipleship relationship where the person is not doing what they're supposed to do. I would always say first pray, 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 pray. But in your prayer, also be strategic in what you're asking God. The one thing I would stand stand for is for reconciliation. So always ask God for mercy to help you guys reconcile to a point of a healthy relationship. Ask God that this is what is happening. I can't deal with this anymore. This is causing me pain. Can you please talk to the other person and correct the other person that this is what is happening to me? And most likely God has a way or will find a way that the person will be talked to. Now, if God corrects the person and the person doesn't listen, then one another prayer that you can pray is, God, am I to stay in this place? Is there a process that you're taking me through as well? God might be using that as a way to process you to... And it could be different for you, whatever lesson he has for you, if there is a lesson, you know, um, then that would be your next question or that would be another prayer that you'd ask, ask God, am I to stay or am I to go? Just as how even King David, when he came back and he saw that his stuff was stolen, after encouraging himself, he then asked God, am I to pursue? Can I go and take back the stuff that was taken from me? It is possible that God could have said, no, don't worry, I will restore everything back to you. That could have been another answer. But God told him to pursue and overtake and he will surely recover all. And he went and he recovered all. So it could be that for you, you are to stay. For you, you are to go. And then another thing in that situation would be to ask for good advice from good people around you. Ask for good counsel. Go to people that you can trust and you can respect what their counsel will be and ask them, okay, what do I do in this situation? This is it, this is it, this is it. Most likely one person has gone through a similar thing that can tell you how God dealt with them in that situation. Does not mean that you have to copy and paste, but it could be a way that God will give you the wisdom of how to go through that. Then the next prayer that I would say that you should pray, if God tells you to stay or go, whatever it is, then it would be that, Lord, where next? If God tells you to go, then the next prayer would be, where next? Or what am I to do? Like, what next? You don't just leave a a, a place and then you're wandering off. I personally see a great advantage in being mentored in being discipled it really does fill in the holes that you yourself don't see so i would not recommend that you leave a place of fellowship and then you wander about aimlessly without a fellowship if the holy spirit tells you sit with me i will be your mentor i want you to enter into a space on a season of isolation i want to be your teacher then that is fine Because that is an instruction. That is the next thing. But then if he tells you, okay, this person has fallen short. There is this other person I want you to go and meet. Then you're following instruction. You're obeying Christ. And that is the best place to be in in the obedience of God. That is the best place you really want to be in. That's your best shot. And it will not be counted against you. So... That is what I've come to say today (laughs) about how mentorship is a committed thing as well. And it also requires honor, both from the mentor and the mentee as well. And I just want to take this moment to pray for anyone that is either a mentor or a mentee in whatever aspect it is. I pray for the grace to be able to relate well with other people Relating well with other people is not easy. It it I would I I can say it carries grace. <laughs> so I really pray in the name of Jesus Christ that every atom of grace, every amount of grace you will need as a mentee or as a mentor to whoever it is, as a discipler or a discipled. Whatever it is, I really pray for the grace for you to go through that process 
and to be transformed and to be renewed to where God wants you to go. I pray that when you pray to God, that he answers speedily and nothing will overcome you. Nothing will be an obstacle to you in the name of Jesus. I pray your fire will burn bright, even in situations that would put a damp to your spiritual fire and fervor. I pray that your fire burns bright regardless of what it is in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Alright guys, as always, I love you with the love of Christ. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, um, give feedback. Have you ever gone through such a process? How was it for you? And what did God tell you to do? And um, take care of yourself and see you guys next week by God's grace. Um, I am planning for this coming month, October right yes i am planning to do a few takeover episodes where i have other christians and sisters and brothers in the faith that i would like them to take over an episode to share on their hearts what the holy spirit lays upon it and i hope and i trust that it's going to be a very very beautiful time i will also be sitting and learning as always and take care and see you when i see you bye Thank you.